not much chance. Completely cut loose from purpose. He was a young man riding a bus through North Carolina on the way to somewhere. And it began to snow. And the bus stopped at a little cafe in the hills and the passengers entered. And he sat at the counter with the others and he ordered. The food arrived. And the meal was particularly good. And the coffee. The waitress was unlike the women he'd known. She was unaffected. And there was a natural humor which came from her. And the fry cook said crazy things and the dishwasher and back laughed, a good, clean, pleasant laugh. And the young man watched the snow through the window. And he wanted to stay in that cafe forever. And the curious feeling swam through him that everything was beautiful there. And it would always stay beautiful there. And then the bus driver told the passengers that it was time to board. And the young man thought, I'll just stay here. I'll just stay here. But then he rose and he followed the others onto the bus. He found his seat and he looked at the cafe through the window. And then the bus moved off down the curve, downward, out of the hills. And the young man looked straight forward. And he heard the other passengers speaking of other things where they were reading or trying to sleep. And they hadn't noticed the magic. And the young man put his head to one side, closed his eyes and pretended to sleep. There was nothing else to do. Just listen to the sound of the engine and the sound of the tires in the snow. I was in line at the supermarket the other day, and um, you know, I had all my things on the little uh, conveyor belt there. And uh, there's a gal in front of me that is, uh, well, she keeps staring at me, and I'm, I'm getting a little nervous. And uh, she continues to stare at me, and I, um, I keep looking the other way, and then. Finally, she comes over closer to me, and she says, I, I apologize for staring. It must have been annoying, but I, I, you look so much like my son who died. I, I just can't take my eyes off you. And she proceeds to go into her purse, and she pulls out a, a photograph of her son who died, and uh, he looks absolutely nothing like me. In fact, he's Chinese. Uh, anyway, we, uh, we, we chat a little bit, and, uh, <clears throat> she says, uh, I'm sorry, I, I have to ask you, would, would you mind, as I, as I leave the, the supermarket here, would you mind saying goodbye, Mom, to me? I, I, I know it's a strange request, but I haven't heard my son say goodbye, Mom, to me in so long. It would mean so much to me to hear it. And uh, if, if you don't mind, I, 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 and I said, well, I, you know, I, okay, I, yeah, sure, uh, uh, I, I can say that. And, and so she uh, gets her, her groceries all checked out and... Um, as she's going out the door, she waves at me and she hollers across the store, Goodbye, son. And I look up and I wave and I say, Goodbye, Mom. And she goes. And uh, So I get my, my, my few things there and the conveyor belt and the, the checker checks out my things. and uh, And he gives me the total and he says, That'll be... Four hundred and seventy-nine dollars, um, and and I said, well, how, how is that possible? I've only got a little tuna fish and uh, some skim milk and uh, mustard and a uh, loaf of bread. He he goes, well, well, you're also paying the for the groceries for your mother. She um, told me you'd take care of the bill for her, and I said, well, wait a minute, that that's not my mother. 
And he said, well, I distinctly heard her say as she left the store, uh, bye, son, and, and you said, bye, mom. And so uh, w w what are you trying to, to say here? I, I, I said, well, Jesus. And I, I looked out into the parking lot, and she was just getting into her car. And I ran out there, and she was just closing the door, and she had a little bit of her leg sticking out of the door. She was pulling away, and I grabbed her leg, and I started pulling it just the way I'm pulling yours. <laughs>